H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Can someone see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> so this is the link. I'm sure most of you would have taken a look at this. This is an h2kinfosys.com and then it's going to have the course content for this specific course. Um, here are the general course details. It's going to list like who this course is for and what does a Selenium engineer do. You can um, go and take a look at this. Uh, but we are going to be mainly um, looking at the curriculum of this course. We are going to be starting with Java. Okay, as I explained, Java is going to be the core language. We are going to be starting right from the basics of Java. This course, we want to make sure that folks, most of the folks here don't have experience with coding. We want to make sure that we are covering right from the basics so they are comfortable with all the major um, features of Java. So we'll be starting with introduction of Java. We'll look at a brief history. We will look at how Java works. What is the architecture of Java? What is JVM, JRE, and different components in Java? And then we will be looking at what variables are. Um, we will be uh, doing some examples of arrays. And in all these, we will be doing hands-on coding. Okay. Even before we do all this, our first step would be to install Java on each of your machines. Only if you have Java installed, we will even be able to start with the coding exercise. We will be sharing a link that is going to have all the steps um, to install JDK and how you install Eclipse and all that. So you are all set to set the, start the course. We can do it in the class or you can also do it at home. So we don't have to spend a lot of time in the class and we can repurpose it for something else. Um, so that is the precondition before we start the course. And um, so um, as I said, we'll be looking at arrays. Um, there are what are the different data types in Java. We'll be looking at the if for loops statements in Java. And then uh, we will also be looking at object oriented programming concepts, okay, which is encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, what each of that is. On top of it, we will also be looking at Java utilities. Uh, we'll be looking at how to handle exceptions in Java. We'll be talking about constructors. We'll be talking about the access specifiers in Java. Um, these are only to name a few. There are going to be a lot more that we are going to be learning in Java. Okay. Any questions in Java course content? Okay. And after that, we will be starting with Selenium. When it comes to Selenium, the major thing in Selenium is locators. Okay, so what are locators? We're going to be looking at how we are going to find elements and there are a lot of other concepts in Selenium here. I'm sure uh, even if I talk about any of it, it may be like too um, early to explain any of this, but we do have um, a dense kind of content here um, when it comes to Selenium, okay, because this is going to be the main agenda of this course. And if you learn Java, it's going to be a lot easier for you to go and understand what each of this is and how to implement it using Java. Before we even get into any of this, we will set up basic Selenium in your machine. We will have to download Selenium web driver. We will have to go through a little bit of steps. So you're all set to get started with all this. As a part of each of these sessions, uh, we will be having hands-on coding. So my goal here is to show some code from my system um, I can share the code. You can do something similar. You can either do it in the class or, you know, you can do it at home and we'll also have some sessions to do at home so we can review it during the next classes. And after or any questions on the Selenium course content? Okay. And after that, we will be looking at automation frameworks. OK, we are going to be talking about what are the different automation frameworks. You would have heard a lot um, buzz, you know, it's a it's a buzzword automation framework. If you're looking for a QA job in automation, you know, people talk about automation frameworks. They need people to build automation frameworks. 
this is kind of an advanced topic but we would be looking at a sample automation framework so you get an idea of what it is and how to implement one here is where your java concepts like object oriented programming concepts inheritance polymorphism all that is going to help you and after that we are going to be talking about design patterns a little bit we are not going to get into too much detail uh, but this page object model is a very popular design pattern used um, in selenium coding in selenium arc uh, framework okay so we are going to be learning about what page object model is and we'll also be looking at a sample page object model framework and then we will be talking about build automation tools um, most of the companies they use something called as maven you will see how it looks like and uh, what are the various parts and what is the purpose and we look at some sample code and there are also some continuous integration tools used we would look at that and um, we'll be touching a little bit on git we are not going to be doing actual coding or anything with it but we'll be looking at the important commands and how git bash is used because if you are going to be doing automation um, you will have to check in code to the repository you will have to clone a repository you will have to get the code from the repository so that is the purpose of git we will be looking into that and then we will be looking into what object repository is in addition to that we will be um, um, talking about logging how you would log certain commands or certain um, text um, so it's going to give you the results and you can always go back and track um, and last but not the least we will also be learning about cucumber um, cucumber i don't think it's a good idea to keep it towards the end i would rather plug it in along with selenium so when we are learning about automation frameworks maybe just before automation frameworks we can learn cucumber okay because that is a very um, commonly asked um, skill whenever you apply for selenium jobs it generally comes with cucumber too any questions so far okay so i am going to go back to the other slide um, which is the selenium course did anyone have a question okay and um would like i would really like for the class to be as interactive as possible if anyone has any questions feel free to stop me and um also always like feel free to participate in the class so that you know you are comfortable and we let go of the fear and it's going to be a lot easier during your interview so i would really suggest folks here to interact in the class and you know answer questions even if you're wrong it's completely okay we are all here to learn so that's completely okay Okay, so um, okay, so since we went through all that, um, let us maybe get started a little bit. I do have some content here. Um, I will try to cover as much as possible, but at least to start with, let us um, talk about manual versus automated testing. Um, so who can explain the need for automated testing? Why do we need automated testing? Uh, hi, Akila. Can I give you this answer? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, automation uh, testing is a uh, very uh, fast working tool and uh, it is generated uh, 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 man uh, then manual testing. Uh, it's better uh, than uh, manual testing. Sorry, I, I just confused myself. If someone can answer, I'm okay with that. No problem. But thank you so much for stepping up. Yeah, thank okay. you. Any, yeah. Anyone else? I mean, I think the... Yeah, let me go ahead. When a task has to be repeated multiple times instead of going for it manually, when you automate it, system does it for it fast for us. So. Correct. So automation testing helps us save time. Okay. And what else? Why do we need automated testing? What is the other advantage? Manual error can be eliminated. Very good. Correct. Okay. So in automation testing, 
since there is no manual, I mean, at least minimal manual intervention, um, the possibility of manual errors is going to be really low. So that is another advantage of automated testing. Anything else? And, and Akila, if we want to do the regression testing, we should we can do regression testing only with the automation because the the concept coming uh, uh, for the automation is from regression testing, right? Yes, correct. That is also a good point. So it helps us do regression testing um, because everything is automated and it's already going to have the test cases in place. So all you have to do is just execute. So no manual work is needed. Okay, anyone has question about the need for automation because we really need to understand that before we even get into Selenium. If you have, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to explain. I think Akila, if we have uh, less data, like uh, if, if we have more data to manipulate, so we, we, should, we, we cannot uh, do with the manual testing. Correct. Very good. Correct. So if there is a lot of data to validate, for example, let us say that you have to validate a file that has million records. You need to compare that file against a database. How would you do that manually, right? It's almost impossible to do that task manually. So in those scenarios, automation is really going to help. All you have to do is just write a code, maybe pass it through a loop and it's going to do the validation for you and it's going to be much quicker. It's also going to save a lot of time and effort and it's also going to be reusable. Okay, so um, yeah, so the major advantages is this. Okay, so as we see here, advantages of automation testing are that it increases test coverage. If you're going to uh, cover something manually, then the test coverage might be limited because you may not have enough time. You may not be aware of certain scenarios that need to be executed. You may miss some scenarios. But if you are doing it in an automated fashion and if you're going to uh, run the regression every time, then those kind of gaps can be, um, it's, it, it, it can be closed, okay? The second thing is the tests are more accurate. When you manually test something, there is a room for human error. But if you're going to automate it, then it's going to be more accurate. As we saw, it's going to ease regression testing time. Anyone have questions on what regression testing is? Yeah, can you explain what regression, uh, regression testing is, please? Sure. So regression testing is to make sure that the existing functionality of the application is working as expected. That is what regression testing means. So let's say you have Amazon website, okay? Amazon, they have a new release. They have a new enhancement. The enhancement they have is to make sure that sort is coming in a specific order. When a user searches, sort is displayed based on the latest update at time or something like that okay so that is going to be amazon's um new enhancement as a part of this is it enough if you just test that the sort is working or should you test the entire application to make sure that everything is working as expected you should uh, do entire application everything is uh, has to be work uh, perfected Correct. Correct. You need to make sure that just because the sort functionality has been enhanced before you deploy this code to production, you need to make sure that the entire application works as expected, right? Is it possible to do that manually? Yes, it is possible, but it can take a lot of time. And because a human being is going to do that, there might be gaps, there might be errors in testing. So that is the use of regression. Regression is a set of test cases that is going to test the existing functionality of the application. Did that answer your question? I don't know if it's it was Anton or someone else that asked the question. Oh, it was good. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And the next advantage is that it facilitates with reusable test scripts. You can reuse the test instead of rewriting something. The same thing can be executed over and over again. 
that's going to save us a lot of time it's going to save us a lot of money um, yeah save us a lot of money and it also helps validate complex scenarios effectively okay um cost wise benefits as we know automation can save us cost it can also increase return on investment all you have to do is you just have to hire a person that is an automation developer and the person is going to do all the code and the code is going to execute everything for us instead of hiring like four five or six manual testers and as we saw it also saves a lot of time so these are the benefits of automation testing and selenium is a tool that helps us achieve automation testing any questions so far so Akira, i have a question like uh, so is, so why is still uh, the manual testers they need a manual tester because i'm so just uh, just uh, confused about that like uh, in automation testing if like everything is we can do fast and you know and uh, so why they still need manual testers okay based on what i am seeing the need for manual testers 10 years ago and now it has reduced okay yeah. you're yeah. in the in the, i mean if when you when you're looking for jobs you might have seen right yeah how many percentage of jobs do you see that needs manual tester maybe like 10 percent yeah right? they are going to ask for some kind of automation so as we see the need for just manual testing has reduced but it doesn't mean that all the companies whoever are asking for automation testers are only wanting the testers to automate right because if you end up in automation testing job you can also end up doing manual testing kind of a work right there right. are some limitations of automation testing automation testing is not going to do like each and everything it's not going to replace manual testing there will be certain situations where manual testing is still needed um, examples can be, let us say that you have a software application and there is the application is in unstable. It keeps changing. The UI keeps changing. Mm -hmm. Do you think spending time in automation is going to be worth it? No. Right. So in those scenarios, you will need to do manual testing. Okay. And let us say that you have a fast um turnaround application you have um, a, a, a web application or something that has release every week that has release every other day do you think you will have enough time to automation um uh, to automate the code to automate the test no because automation is going to take us time in those scenarios you will have to do a manual testing and you may have to handle the automation later Oh, okay. there might be certain scenarios where automation may not be possible selenium has some um, um some limitations for example if you want to validate images if you want to validate compare two different images selenium doesn't have support to it if you want to um, validate captcha right you know what captcha is right so if you want to validate captcha uh, when you're uh, actually logging to a website you've you would have seen that captcha kind of um, the, right. the thing coming up right so those mm -hmm. things has limitations oh. and as i said um in like most of the scenarios generally i mean there is not enough time to automate so that is a major limitation in those scenarios you will need to do manual testing if you need to try out exploratory kind of scenarios if you want to try out ad hoc kind of scenarios Selenium is not going to help you because everything is pre-programmed. If you want to try out um, like edge cases, if you didn't plan it during your automated test, then as a manual tester, you will have to do those scenarios. Right. So those are the situations where manual testing is still handy. And for sure, automation testing is not going to 100 percent replace manual testing. But it can replace like 80 to 90, 80 percent, maybe to 90 percent. But definitely, there is going to be a, a need for uh, manual but, testing. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So here we have some advantages, disadvantages. I mean, the differences of manual and automation testing. 
um, it is something that we already went through so i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this particular slide uh, the next one is we are going to be looking into the advantages of selenium um, so why is selenium used widely one main reason is because it is open source okay unlike qtp um, for QTP, if a company is going to use QTP for automation, they have to purchase licenses. It is, it can be very, very expensive. They will have to purchase licenses for each automated tester, right? So each of the person that is using the tool, they might need licenses and it can get really expensive. Advantage of Selenium, primary advantage is that it is open source, which means that you don't have to pay anything to automate using Selenium. Everyone here today, we can get selenium online and we can try out our own test automation okay so that is the first advantage the second advantage is that it is highly reliable and uh, the third is that it supports multiple web browsers so it supports edge it supports um, ie it supports firefox it supports different chrome different browsers and it also supports different operating systems we'll be looking at the stack that it supports soon um, i have a different slide for that and the next advantage is i wouldn't say it's very easy to learn um maybe it's like moderately easy to learn okay um and the next one is it supports a wide range of programming languages as we know and it also has an ability to parallelly test instead of running the tests on a sequential basis like for for huge projects there can be like 10 to thousands of test cases how are you able to run those test cases serially right it can take days to execute sometimes so in those scenarios you can use something called a selenium grid where you can run test cases parallelly in different systems instead of running it in a sequential fashion so selenium also has a um, feature for that so any question can you explain that the selenium grid again yeah so selenium grid is uh, is one of the features of selenium it's actually one of the components of selenium using which you can execute the tests parallelly okay parallelly means let's say that you have a login test you have one test is where the user is going to try and make sure that the login functionality is working you have another test where the user is going to make sure that the search functionality is using is working you have another test where it's going to make sure that the credit card uh, billing functionality is working you have all these features right if you're running just using regular selenium ide if you're executing the test without the use of grid then the test is going to be executed one after the other so the first test can take like one minute second test can take like 50 seconds third test can take like two minutes right so it's going to execute one after the other what if you have thousands of test cases like that it's going to take a lot of time to execute right because it's going to be one after the other the advantage of selenium grid is that you can do parallel testing you can run multiple test cases in multiple machines at the same time that way you can save a lot of time okay in ide one function after one function but in grid we can do the parallel right yes exactly okay that Thanks. main advantage of grid. grid is not widely used there are other ways that you can parallelly um, execute your tests you can you know do like using threading using multi-threading and different things um hmm. but um yeah but you know since we're talking about selenium i just wanted to bring up that point Okay, in Selenium, we are going to learn that that grid and threading and everything? No. no, we are not going to be learning how to use the grid. I can maybe briefly show in the class, uh, but okay. we are not going to be getting into the details of it. Okay, thank you, Akila. And again, grid is not something uh, people ask for um, that much, so I wouldn't worry too much. It's more than enough to understand what grid is, what the functionality of it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, are we yeah. going to cover Maven, uh, Jenkins, and other stuff? We are going to be learning about Maven. We will mm -hmm. be learning about Jenkins, but I don't think we will be going and 
actually creating a Jenkins job because that can be a limitation because it may need like, you know, additional privileges and things like that, which we don't have. But we will look at what Jenkins is and how to set up and things like that. Okay. So how to execute a test, things like that. So I think a lot of in job descriptions, they are asking how to do that uh, Jenkins and Marvin and uh, test and Z. Yes, right. we will be learning all that. Okay. okay, okay. We will be learning how to do test ng, how it works, what is the purpose. We will be mm. looking at what Jenkins is, what it can do, um, how mm. to execute tests using Jenkins and um, Maven, right? So we will be looking into that as yeah. well. Okay, okay. It's a good right. Thank you. Yeah. So as you said, like it supports uh, support multiple well web browsers, right? So Correct. it means like uh, we can run the same code in multiple browsers. Exactly, that is the advantage. You oh. can run the same code in different browsers. All you mm -hmm. have to do is you have to link or you have to call the right web driver. Web there driver. are different um, for each browser. You will have a separate configuration, so you need to make sure that you're calling the right browser yeah. it's all okay. but you can reuse the same code okay Thank there you. can be limitations in that because way that a particular element appears in ie might be different from the way that the element appears renders in firefox or different browsers you may have to tweak the code a little bit but yes you can reuse the code okay okay got it Okay, so this is the history of Selenium. You can just look into it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because in the interest of time, we have like four more minutes. Um, but first, it started as Selenium Core, and then you have the Selenium Web Driver, and then two other uh, versions of Selenium um, were released, one in 2008 and one in 2016. Right now, we have um, something called a Selenium 4. It was released in October of 2021. That is the most recent version of Selenium. Um, the main advantages of this Selenium version are that we were talking about the grid, right? So this grid has been enhanced more. And Selenium IDE, they, they've made some enhancements to that as well. Uh, there are locators uh, enhancements in Selenium 4. Documentation has been improved um, and looks like they have support for Chrome debugging. And it also has better window and tab management. Um, we don't have to get into basics of any of this, details of any of this. I just wanted to put this slide uh, because Selenium 4 is the latest version of Selenium. And language compatibility. Um, so languages, we already saw that uh, it supports Java. In addition to that, Selenium supports C Sharp, PHP, and you can see the entire list here. Platforms, it supports Windows, Linux, Mac, and other platforms as it's listed here. Browsers are, this is the support for browsers so you can see that it pretty much covers like most of the browsers and um, this is the architecture of selenium so here you have this is the different client libraries that selenium provides okay and you have something called as the browser drivers so someone asked a question right how do you call the right drive uh, browser um, can the same code be used to execute the test cases against different browsers? And here is the answer. So you have different Selenium drivers for each of the browser. So you have a separate one for Chrome, you have one for Firefox. All you have to do is go to the Selenium website, just download the drivers, save it in your system, and you can give the path. So the code is going to run in the right driver. If you want to execute the code against IE, then you will be using the IE driver. Okay, so that's how you map it. So you can run the same code against all these browsers. And then you have the real browser. So this driver, it interacts with this browser. Okay, and it performs actions with this browser. And it also has some libraries using which we can actually do the automation. Okay, so what are the limitations of Selenium? There are limitations of Selenium. And one of the major limitations is that um, there is lack of technical support. Um, if you're going to be using tools like QTP, um, you know, if you have any issues, you can always call tech support. We can call QTP support and they're going to be there to help you. But since Selenium is open source, 
um, there is very limited, I mean, I would say lack of technical support. You may have to go through the forums and you may have to figure out what exactly is going on. The next thing is it only supports web-based applications. This is also a major one. Um, Selenium supports only web-based application like, you know, websites. But if you want to automate a desktop kind of an application, Selenium is not the way to go. And uh, test creation in Selenium, it can take time and it can also be expensive. We will learn this. You will understand this once we get into the actual implementation of Selenium. And uh, it can also be a little difficult to set up a test environment when compared to tools like QTP. It's not very hard, but when you compare to tools like QTP, UFT, it can take a little bit of time. Um, it also has limited support for visual testing. And this is something that we already saw. If you want to do like pixel to pixel, image to image comparison, Selenium doesn't have options for that. Doesn't have direct options for that. Okay. You can okay. achieve using Java but selenium does not have like direct easy libraries to do that any questions there so ua it will not support the ua testing you mean no no <laughs> ui testing is different from visual testing okay uh, we will learn that we will take that in a separate class but ui testing is not the same as visual testing Okay. okay. I will, I, yeah, I will get to it in a different class. It may take like few minutes to explain. Okay. Okay. And um, but the main purpose of Selenium is UI testing. Okay. But it is not. It has limited support for visual testing. And the tests can be flaky sometimes. Um, Selenium WebDriver four looks like they added some enhancements, but still Selenium tests can be flaky. I'm not quite sure how Selenium WebDriver four works. Maybe it has been improved uh, we will actually have to run and see how the test cases are flaky test means like you know sometimes the test can pass sometimes the test can fail sometimes it may have issues in like rendering i mean in identifying certain um, locators uh, identifying certain objects on the screen things like that due to which the test cases can fail and there is no test tool integration when compared to tools like uft qtp they have integration with um tools like mercury and all that they already have but that kind of integration is not available in selenium and um reporting is also not available in selenium okay you may have to use um additional libraries in order to report the result of your test so those could be some of the limitations of selenium and this is going to be my last slide. I really wanted to do a Selenium IDE. Um, I thought like, you know, we can spend a little bit of time um, installing Selenium IDE, but it can take like 15 to 20 minutes. So if we have time, we can cover it during the next class. But before we close for the day, um, let us look into the major components of Selenium. So one is Selenium IDE, which we already looked at. Um, so Selenium IDE is mainly used for playback, recording, debugging, um, and it's just a record playback kind of a tool. There is something called a Selenium Grid, which we already saw. It is mainly for parallel execution of test cases. And we have something called a Selenium Web Driver. This is what we are going to be learning in this class. Okay. It is mainly going to be concentrating on the Selenium Web Driver. We, it's the latest version of Selenium. It contains tons of APIs, and we are going to see how we can achieve automation testing using Selenium WebDriver. Selenium remote control is not there anymore, which is why I striked it out. Um, so the main things that we need to be at least knowledgeable about is IDE, GRID, and we will be working on Selenium WebDriver. Any questions? So today onwards, you are going to continue the classes? No. So this week, another day, we will be having a similar demo kind of a session. And okay. uh, we will be starting the classes, I believe, like next week or week after that, we will have to, we will have to get back to you on that. Okay. Timings are same? Yes. Timings will be 9 p.m. Um, to 10 p.m. EST. Okay, you are ex you are uh, teaching the Koja also, right? 
we will be teaching java correct we are yes. not going to be getting into too many details in java but we will be uh, um touching on the ones that are really going to be essential as a automation tester we will be okay. um, do you i mean i share the details of the java content that we are going to be covering um no, you no, can take because i am attending uh, another class of uh, selenium but uh, some because of some reasons i miss a lot of classes then i asked the h2k then i want to rejoin okay but sure the... yeah so we are going to be covering the major concepts if that's what you mean by core java we will be talking yes. about like variables arrays loops object yeah. oriented programming um we'll be you know coding a little bit in java and we'll be looking at exceptions so whatever is needed for your career as a selenium automation tester we would be covering those okay that's uh, all right. uh, uh, so can you suggest us any uh, website or, or, or any, any material where we can practice a sample course i mean get hands on on like for loop while loop and all the stuff any sample programs we can start doing yes so i mean course wise uh, program wise i would say like printing numbers from 1 to 100 printing even numbers print odd numbers mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and it can be like reversing a string um finding the duplicates in an array if you are able to do all this i would say at least you can you know it's mm -hmm. going to be a lot easier going forward okay okay and the websites w3c is a great website um and there is also guru 99 um they have amazing content like right from how you can get selenium downloaded in your system how to do mm -hmm. basic coding they have like great tutorials there is also something called tutorials point they also have good tutorials i did see something recently and it was also interesting um i believe it is called selenium automation the website itself it had mm -hmm. like some sample programs where you can run some selenium tests that also seemed interesting um so those are the ones that at least i can think about right now okay Akila, can you can you paste in the chat box then we can uh, keep it in our notepad yeah give me a second i so one is um w3c okay i don't know the exact website you can just look up w3c and it's going to show the website and then tutorials find and then Okay. Yeah, I just shared the details in chat, and someone has a question. Uh, question is C sharp same with C plus plus? No, C sharp is different. C plus plus is different. Um, yeah. So both are different languages. They are not the same. Okay. Uh, I have question. Mm -hmm. uh, API testing and the Selenium APIs is both are different, right? Ask that once again. Yeah, API testing is also highly demanded in the market. So I just yes. wanted, I just see like Selenium Selenium APIs. So both are different. Or oh, just... So Selenium helps us do UI testing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Selenium helps us do UI testing. how do you do ui testing with selenium that is using selenium apis api so, testing is completely different different okay yes it is we are not going to be covering api testing in this class for api testing we use tools like rest assured we use postman we use swagger we there are other tools for api testing we are not going to be covering that in this class this is only for ui testing using selenium sure thank you so much I I have a question sir. So, uh, I use a Mac, MacBook. Uh, it's um, it's okay for Selenium. Can I install somebody uh, you help me to install uh, Java yes. GDK or so Java say, GDK? Yes. Yes. So you say that you have a MacBook? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have a Mac as well. Uh, we can install. I can help install um Selenium. I mean first we will need JDK. it's a little different in mac when compared to windows we'll have to go through some steps 
but yes certainly we can work on that during the class thank you so much thank you sure so classes will be start from the next week right um not, not this week. quite definitely not this week next week also i'm not quite sure um okay. i think h2k if you can send them an email they will help you help answer that question because i myself am not sure when it's going to start sure i will ask them thank you sure h2k yeah, from yeah, they are sending this demo class only i mean uh, we are just waiting to uh, start with the selenium uh, thing yes yes we are going to be first giving some demo sessions we just want to make sure we have like good set of um people and then we would start the class i assume it will be like week after next but i can be wrong so that is the reason you know why you are having to wait okay actually uh, akila i like to join the after uh, uh, i mean after two months it it is uh, there for the new batch classes cuz in august i'm thinking okay um, please send an email to tra training at h2k i am okay. really not sure what their plan is but i okay. uh, would be able to help you answer that okay. question all right and, um i think sh someone is asking give me a second i'm looking at chat so shamson is asking if there is a project during this class no in this class we are not going to be having a live project there is a separate option that h2k provides if you want to have experience with live project so um that is something separate it's not it's not included here but we will be looking at some samples okay we'll be do doing some coding here okay <clears throat> okay so if there are no other questions then i think we are good for today we can catch up on thursday and if you have any friends if anyone else wants to join the session um, they are more than happy they are welcome and um, if anyone else here is interested in joining our mock sessions we have it every monday wednesday and friday we discuss um qa uh, interview kind of questions so you are more than welcome to join that if you would like a link please send an email to h2k training and they can help you with that okay so who is going to take the mac interviews akila me wow okay 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 good what, what time it's a mock interview mock so interview. on monday it's 8 pm est wednesday 1 pm friday 1 pm can you uh, give the timings just i want to make sure i will note it monday 8 pm wednesday 1 pm friday 1 pm all are in est okay next, uh, next class is for the same time yeah yes so this session um qa demo session is going to be thursday at 9 pm and again it is only going to be a demo session Okay. okay. Uh, so so, so I missed it. Right? So we 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 when start the classes uh, regularly. So next yes. Week. Regarding the classes, you should be hearing from H2K as to when they are planning to start the classes. I am really not sure when they are planning to start the classes. Okay. He sent me email. It's uh, next week, Monday to Friday. Yes. I doubt if it's going to be next week, but um, yeah, you can ask, send them an email, and they should be. Okay, you know. thank you so much. See you Thursday. Okay, okay. thank hi, you all. Mm -hmm. Hi, Akila. Just a minute. This is Andrea. I joined very late because uh, you know some uh, some uh, technical glitch happened. So, will I be able to get a recording of this session by any chance? Uh, 